When a bird approaches a large wall of glass, they see the reflection of the area they just came from, which is obviously a flight path because they were already flying through it, or they can see reflections of sky and vegetation. And all of those things are appealing to a bird as a flight path to move forward. My name is Brian Lenz. I am the Window Collision Campaign Manager for American Bird Conservancy, and we are here at Pfizer Forum. Window collisions are the one intimate experience with wildlife that everybody has had. And that really speaks to the volume of the problem. He's over here now. He's over here. And it's a really moving experience when it happens because you know what just happened. And that bird, even if it flew off, probably is going to have a really serious problem and may just be going somewhere else to die. You know, nobody wants their windows to kill birds. The window collision problem is actually really serious. It kills up to a billion birds a year in the United States. One billion, billion with a B. And over the last 40 years, North America has actually lost a cumulative total of 2.9 billion birds. So the annual losses from things like window collisions really do add up. We're fortunate to have some really dedicated volunteers. They will collect any dead birds they find. Whoa. And they'll salvage any live birds they find and bring them here to our wildlife rehabilitation center, where we will do our best to try and keep them live and get them fit to be released again. My name is Scott Deal. I'm the wildlife director at the Wisconsin Humane Society's Wildlife Rehabilitation Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. There's uh, oh, bones in the chest are broken. We have its right wing taped. So that's the equivalent of a human having their arm in a sling. The reason we know that this is a window collision is the location found, because it's usually within a couple of feet of uh, a window. For this bird, it's one of the commercial buildings in, in downtown Milwaukee. Sadly, many window collision victims are dead when they're found. So this morning, uh, our bird collision monitor found these two swamp sparrows, deceased, and this beautiful yellow rumped warbler, again, right next to big commercial buildings in, in the downtown area. These birds may have made uh, a harrowing trip on migration of hundreds of miles, in some cases, 1,000 miles. May have made that trip numerous times. Came back to our area, and their life ended on a little 16th of an inch thick piece of glass. And I think that's really, really sad. I think the real tragedy of the problem is that it is entirely preventable. Architecture has a complicated relationship with the environment. I mean, buildings, from an ecological standpoint, use up a lot of resources. And if architects want to do something that's pro-environment, it's actually a real challenge. But preventing bird collisions is one of the few things that's incredibly simple to do. My name is Philip Takeman. I'm an associate professor of architecture here at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. I mean, there's a lot that architects, designers, builders can do to prevent the problem. They can, at the start of the design process, make a decision to use fritted or bird-safe glass. I mean, they can use retrofit solutions. So right here behind me, you see an example of a retrofit that the students here designed uh, in order to prevent collisions with this portion of their School of Architecture. The spacing and the pattern is designed to confuse birds. Uh, it prevents them from colliding with the window. The U.S. Green Building Council's LEED program assigns a score to every single material that goes on the outside of a building. And the score represents how likely a bird is to hit that material. Field Sparrow 49540. We determine those scores using the American Bird Conservancy's collision testing tunnel at the Powder Mill Nature Reserve in Pennsylvania, where we basically fly live birds down a tunnel at one clear pane of glass and one pane of whatever we're testing. And as you put bird-friendly patterns on the glass, depending on the strength of the pattern, the rating of that represents how likely a bird is to hit that material. So we're standing here in front of the Pfizer Forum, which is the Bucks Arena, what happens to be the first major athletic facility that was constructed in a bird-friendly manner. 
I'm Sean Groff. I'm Vice President of the Great Lakes Region for the American Bird Conservancy. So they use things like bird-friendly glass. Most of the building is not even glass at all. It's solid materials. So birds can recognize those elements and avoid the structure altogether. The Viking Stadium was just built. It was a, a bird killer in many respects. The Bucks were in the process of designing their new stadium, so we thought if we get in ahead of time and talk to them about bird-friendly design and they could incorporate it early on in the process, we could have a success story. So we essentially have a tale of two cities, the Viking Stadium in Minneapolis, the Bucks Arena in Milwaukee. One was good for birds, the Milwaukee Bucks Stadium, one was a bird killer. People genuinely want to do the right thing. And in the United States, it turns out that approximately 50% of the window collisions are not on the skyscrapers or not on, on large structures like this, but most of them are on residential properties or buildings under three stories tall. So we're also getting a lot of people who will reach out to us who are homeowners and saying what they can do to prevent bird collisions as well. A lot of people talk about how poorly the construction of the U.S. Bank Stadium went for birds. And I like to say, Yes, that one building didn't go the way bird conservationists wanted it to, but a good thing did come out of it, is that we learned a lesson about how to approach these projects. Ultimately, the decision to build a bird-friendly building, especially one at the scale of a professional sports stadium or arena, comes down to the people who are in charge of that project. And, you know, being able to sit down and have a face-to-face -face with somebody and convince them that it's important. Nobody wants to be a part of killing a billion birds a year. Everybody wants to know what they can do to be a part of the solution instead of being a part of the problem. <laughs>